we have to discuss normal distribution that is topic from statistics normal distribution is one kind of probability distribution there are many kind of probability distribution we study binomial distribution bernoulli distribution normal distribution and so on so today we discuss the normal distribution now we start with the word distribution what is the meaning of distribution distribution means we have to divide anything means there in this case we have given set of data and we have to divide that data in fixed range and we, we find out that probabilities for that data is that for example if we have set of number of 50 students uh, attempt IQ test then we have to find out we arrange that in fixed limit then we find out its histograph take the mean standard deviation and then find out the probability for how many students will score 75 percent how many score so these types of distribution we can use we can solve with the normal distribution now this normal distribution is always defined for real random variables real continuous random variables clear so real means here we talk about all real numbers not we go for the imaginary so these distribution when our data is given that all are real second one is continuous our data cannot be break anywhere if we have a line this is b from here to here we have a plus one a plus two and we have every point so if our function break here we don't know the value of our function from here to here then we cannot use this distribution for this given set of data set of data okay so this is for continuous given data means if we have 50 student range we have uh, 0 to up to 0 to 10 we have then 20 to 30 we don't have then again 40 to 50 uh, we have the range so for this missing data we can't plot our normal distribution and we cannot find out the um, probability function for this distribution so first one we have talk about the real values function second one is continuous third one we talk about the random variables not discrete what are the discrete and random variables if we talk about the discrete variable if we have a die and we toss it or we can say we have a coin and we toss it then coin it always get two faces only so either uh, head or tail so probability for that is 1 by 2 for head and probability for tail is also 1 by 2 means this what are the fixed data that is called the discrete similarly in case of time we have six faces so for every six faces coming one two three four five six what is probability for coming one when single dice throw one time then one by six one by six one by six one by six and one means this is fixed because a die have six faces so probability for coming one is only one by six so this type of set of discrete data we can we can't use the normal distribution we use normal distribution only for the random scattered variables with means if we have 50 student class one score 30 marks out of 50 other scores 25 marks out of 50 one more score 45 marks out of 50 like that so if we have random variable data then we use this normal distribution so how we use this normal distribution i start with the basic if we have a set of of discrete Discrete data means if we have 50, 
fifty students. IQ test score. Okay, if we are fifty student IQ test score. So what we can do? We have to break that from first one marks to. 10 marks how many student we have to break this frequency to then 11 to 20 then 21 to 30 31 to 40 and 41 to 50 we have to break that data means how many students get marks between 1 to 10 if i say 4 student then frequency for that is 4 Second, for this, if we have twelve student, if we have thirty student, if we have then total fifty student, we have thirty, forty, forty-two. Then thirty-one to forty, we have six student. Then four plus six, ten, thirty, forty. So if this have twenty students, because our total is fifty students only, so twenty, thirty, forty, forty-two. This have C. First, we have to plot the histograph. How to plot the histograph? Histograph means that is one kind of what bar graph. So you have to plot. You have to find out the relative frequency. Relative frequency is what frequency divided by total frequency. Total frequency means total number of frequency is 50 so relative frequency for this is 4 by 50 this is 12 by 50 and so on second our width is 0 to 10 10 width margin is 10 next is the relative frequency density because we plot histograph with number of marks and other axis is relative frequency density with the density function we can find very easily so relative frequency density is relative frequency frequency density is relative frequency divided by width so relative frequency is 4 by 50 divided by 10 also 12 by 50 divided by 10 now we plot the histograph histograph is Just our bar graph, same zero, ten, twenty. So if we have this, then this, then this, then this, then this. If we have this type of, then we take if we and we plot the curve. The curve is like that. So this type of distribution we use always. normal distribution normal distribution is one kind of exponential functions means it is when we expanding this distribution it gives always with the help of exponential function now we go for now you understand what is a uh, normal distribution normal distribution is always a bell this is called bell shape so normal distribution always you find that it is a bell shape uh, distribution where the mid is its mean of that distribution and this is the deviation for given distribution so what this is i always told you that is the uh, exponential function so what is our probability density function for this normal case of distribution is we can given by f of x mu and sigma square mu is mean sigma square is variance and sigma is sigma is a standard deviation so this is our mean and this is our variance so our probability density function given for this is 1 upon sigma root 2 pi e to exponential function expand of x minus mu square by sigma square into 2 so this is our formula for normal distribution now we discuss and we find how 
we have to distribute our given function in normal distribution case. But some more important result in normal distribution is what? Number one, it is bell-shaped distribution. Number two, it is symmetrical about its mean line. Its half miss area of there is 50% and remaining area of there is 50% means it's always symmetrical about its mean. Third is this normal distribution area of this given bell is exactly equal to 1 because our probability is always 1. So area for this is 1 and symmetrical and one more thing when we talk about this normal distribution this have one rule it is finished within 3 deviation. So how we discuss if this is our mean point mu this is our first deviation is mu plus sigma if we subtract here this point is mu minus so we can say our 2 by 3 2 by 3 of data is finished in this range 2 by 3 means for one deviation 68% will lie within one deviation Second, if we talk about the mu plus 2 sigma, 2 sigma, here also mu minus of 2 sigma. So, our 95% of area, see 95, for 2 deviation, 95% of given data lie between 2 deviation range. Then, if we talk about the 3 deviation, this is mu plus 3 deviation, mu minus 3 deviation. See, for 3 deviation range, for 3 deviation range, our complete, so for the what we write, for 3 deviation, 99.7% lie within this range. So for normal distribution, this is one rule we can say, 68, 95, 99.7% rule. So what is this? Means in within one deviation, 68% of our given data lie. With two deviation, 95% lie. With three deviation, 99.7% lie. And beyond this is only 0.3% are remaining area is there. Total area is one. Now we discuss one problem so you better understand how this rule works. We discuss which rule 68, 95, 99.7%. I say if we have an example, if we have some data for students, I say the score for IQ test is normally distributed score for IQ test normally distributed with mu means mean is 100 and standard deviation is 10. Standard deviation is 10. Then you give the answer number 1. How many students score above 100 marks second how many students score above 130 marks okay and third how many students score below below 90 marks clear so if we have to find out these three so what we can we go with this rule we first we plot our bell shaped curve this is our bell shaped curve this is our mu mu is our 100 clear mu is 100 now we plot all our deviation first it's 
standard deviation. Standard deviation is 10. So this is 110 marks. This is 90 marks. Second standard deviation 120 and 80. Third standard deviation is 70. And there is 130 marks. Now we see what we want. How many students will score above 100 marks? Above 100 means 100 is our mean. So how many students? We know this is symmetrical distribution. Total area is 100%. So 50% is lie here. So with mean line how many are? 50%. So our answer is 50% of students will get above 100% marks. Clear? Second we want to find out above 130. Above 130. 130 and above is our area is this much only. Means standard deviation 1, 2 standard deviation and this is 3 standard. So above 3 standard deviation. We know our at 3 standard deviation total curve is from 130 to 70. Total students are 99.7%. Then above and below 70 and above 130 is how much? 100 minus 99.7 that gives only 0.3%. Now 0.3% are equally below 70 and above. So we have to divide because it is symmetrical. So 0.3 divided by 2 gives point of 1.5%. Means our answer above 3% how many students? 0.15% of students will get yes above 130. If I talk about how many students score below 70. So below 70 is also below 70 is also 0.15% will score below 70% mark. Next is below 90. Below 90 is we talk about standard deviation 1. See. So in standard deviation 1 is our 68% here. Is how many? 68. So remaining will get below 90. We want to find out this area. Which area? This area, area black color. So this is 68. So this and this gives equal. So what is below 90? 100 <coughs> minus 68. 100 minus 68 is 32%. Now 32%. 32% means below 90 and above 110. So 32 divided by 2 is 16%. So what is our answer? This part is 16%. So what is our answer? 16% student will get below 90. If I talk about above 110. So above 110 is also because below 90 first is the deviation and below is 16. Similarly above 110 is same 16%. So with this 68, 95 and 97, 99.7 rule approximate we have to find out this data. In my next video we can see, we can talk about the standard normal distribution. There we have the table and how we have to find out that standard that, that normal distribution. That's all for normal distribution. Thank you very much.